Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with Heart Attack, Stroke, Cancer, and Disability Prevention. Today I'm talking about a book called Good Calories, Bad Calories. I've reviewed a book by the same author, Gary Tobbs. That book was called Why We Get Fat and What to Do About It. Would I recommend uh, reading the books? Uh, I clearly would recommend reading Why We Get Fat. I would not recommend doing what I did. Read Why We Get Fat and then go back and read Good Calories, Bad Calories. Uh, pardon the whining, but I, I think it helps to understand the history. And let me go back and give a little bit more of the history of uh, Mr. Taubes and, and these books. Um, as I mentioned in the other in the other video, Mr. Taubes was, uh, Gary Taubes was born in Rochester, New York. What's interesting though, is he studied applied physics at Harvard, graduated in 1977, went on for aerospace engineering at Stanford in 1978. Then in an interesting turn, he received a master's degree in journalism at Columbia University in 1981. So he became a, uh, a science journalist, um, uh, maybe, maybe not paid very much. Uh, he became a, a uh, staff reporter for Discover Magazine in 1982 um, and has written many different science uh, articles, written a couple of books, uh, one on cold fusion, uh, another on um, Nobel Prize activities. Uh, again, I don't think that they were that uh, that well received as the next thing that came out. I think he hit the mother load when he wrote an article for New York Times Magazine. It was called, What If It's All Been a Big Fat Lie? And it was about low carbs, uh, low carb diet, and the big fat lie was, you know, the public health authorities saying, look, fat in our diet is what causes heart attack and stroke. He was raising the question, maybe it's not that. I think he's got a great point, and I do think there's a lot of uh, validity to it. As a uh, heart attack and stroke doc, LDL, low-density lipoprotein, is one of the things that the rest of the medical community focuses on the majority of their time on, and that's the analog, uh, analogy of fat in the diet. However, I can tell you it's not LDL. LDL is important, especially for people that have a genetic problem in that area, but it's not uh, fat in the diet. Now, <clears throat> he got, according to him, he, and I think this is a quote, even though I knew the article would be the most controversial article uh, in Times Magazine that year, this was two, uh, 2002, the reaction still shocked me. So, so again, huge firestorm of criticism. It was uh, seen as a major bolster for diets that were really being uh, debated at that point, one of them being the low-carb diet, Atkins diet. In 2007, he wrote a book. It was a tome good calories, bad calories. And again, I think it, the reaction that he's seen to this has just redirected his life and he's spent most of his time on this issue. As the New York Times reviewer Gina Collada said about this book, Taubes doesn't bow to the current style of science writers. He reviews case after case, and I would add after case, after case, after case. Uh, according to uh, Collada, it's hard to read, tedious and repetitive. I would agree with her 130%. It becomes very difficult, especially if you read this, you've read the synopsis book. Part of what happened was that book, um, Good Calories, Bad Calories, created such a reaction like the previous article, The Big Fat Lie, that there was evidently a lot of push for him to do a, a remake, a summary book. And that remake, that summary book, was published in 2010, and it was Why We Get Fat and What to Do About It. It was 250 pages. I can tell you, uh, the 250-page version is more than enough. 
uh, I would not recommend getting the older book. <clears throat> now, um, questions about diets overall. Um, I will be reviewing another book on diets uh, a little bit later by Jenny Rule, R-U-H-L. It's called Diet 101. Uh, Jenny's bigger book was Blood Sugar 101. She's a diabetic. She's in the, uh, what she calls the 5% club. It's the folks that want to keep their hemoglobin A1C less than 5%. Because diabetics have seen a major improvement in their blood glucose from low-carb diets, she gets really deep into low-carb diets, and uh, Blood Sugar 101 is a great summary on it. Um, again, I think far better than uh, either of Taub's books because uh, uh, maybe different. Taub's uh, book, uh, 210 book, Why We Get Fat, I think gives you a more of a global perspective, more of a science perspective. Rule's book is far more practical, gives you a lot of uh, recent research and um, excellent experience. She, is, she developed the award-winning um, web uh, page called Blood Sugar 101. So a few things about, about diet. Does a low-carb diet work? Yes, definitely it works. It works as good or better than many other, most other diets. Is it dangerous? No, I think it's become pretty clear that uh, even with ketogenesis associated with a low-carb diet, that level of ketogenesis does not appear to be dangerous. And it, by the way, is not the same as uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. Are there other diets that work better? Well, there are other diets, and I think really the issue is the individual and what they can tolerate. None of the diets work if you drop them before six months is out. You have to change your dietary habits for a lifetime. The reason I bring up the six months is that there is a pattern when you look at studies that people are not maintaining their diet six months later. So again, a diet is a set of rules that you maintain for your, for your diet uh, for the rest of your life. Uh, do intermittent diets help? Yes, I think there's clearly science that indicates they stimulate stem cell uh, activity. Do um, Plant-based diets work. Yes, I think there's clear uh, information about that and uh, clear evidence that that works. But again, you have to develop something, some set of rules that make uh, uh, a com that are comfortable to you, that you can continue on a long-term basis. We'll talk more about diets and what works and what doesn't uh, in uh, in a later video. Thank you.